so um, what are we talking about today? And so as you know, the channel's name is Read It Bomb, Read It, the Book of Mormon. And I came across a video um, from the YouTube channel, God Loves Mormons, which uh, is, it's an obvious statement, right? God loves all his children. And um, we would think that he loves us too, right? Um, including that we are the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. We proclaim to be his church um, here on the earth. So we would hope that he would love us for that. But this is a uh, YouTube channel that is evangelizing and preaching to specifically um, Mormons, uh, Latter-day Saints, and I guess in an attempt to um, hopefully uh, correct us and show us the error of our ways in order to bring us to what they believe to be the true gospel. Um, and so uh, God loves Mormons. It apparently, um, you know, I would, I would say it's done out of love. It's done out of, uh, I guess, um, a hope to, to help. So kudos to them, um, in, in showing that, uh, I guess, concern, but we're going to talk about a video that they put up and it was from this year and it was talking, uh, it says, let me get the title right because it's a very interesting title. So let's see. The title is Why You Shouldn't Pray About the Book of Mormon. And here on Read It Bomb, where we encourage all to read the Book of Mormon, which is another testament of Jesus Christ, it kind of caught my attention. So we are going to um, do this live walkthrough. Um, uh, I haven't written a script to this. I, I have gone through and grabbed scriptures that I think are relevant um, and that are going to um, kind of uh, go along with what he's saying. Um, well, not go along, but kind of uh, give another viewpoint, right? Uh, he's going to put up his argument why we shouldn't pray about the Book of Mormon, and I'm going to go through certain things that I believe, uh, certain scriptures uh, that I believe show that what he's saying isn't exactly uh, accurate. Um, but yeah, so um, it's free-flowing. We're going to see how, uh, how it goes. This is my, my first uh, live and uh, hopefully I'm going to be doing a couple more of these. So let us start this video um, like this. And here we go. Give me a second. Let me make sure. Okay. It's going to play the audio. Yes. Should you pray to know if the Book of Mormon is true? Yes, you should. The end of the Book of Mormon says this. And when ye shall receive these things, I would exhort you that ye would ask God, the Eternal Father, in the name of Christ, if these things are not true. And if ye shall ask with a sincere heart, with real intent, having faith in Christ, he will manifest the truth of it unto you by the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm sorry about that. I was muted. Okay, so he just read a verse out of the Book of Mormon, and that is what we believe. If um, if you pray and ask Christ, um, well, sorry, you ask God, right? Having faith in Christ, sincere faith, uh, you will know and you will receive through the Holy Spirit um, whether or not the Book of Mormon is true. And it, it makes sense, right? If you ask God, having faith in Jesus Christ, right? Real faith with real intent. He's not just going to let you be guided off the right track, right? I mean, apparently, to most Protestants, if you just accept Jesus Christ in your life, you're going to be saved. You, you, you know, to some, you just say a sinner's prayer. You just make the, you know, you do an altar call, whatever it be, and then you're saved and you can't be lost. So why would God, who let's, you know, let's say the, the let's say that these, um, uh, let's say that the Protestants are right, the, the, the evangelicals are right. Why would God, who just by saying Christ and proclaiming he's our savior, why would if we pray would he lead us astray? You know what I mean? If if I can just claim Christ as my Savior in, you know, in a prayer and I'm saved, why can't I ask God a question and him not give me a correct answer? So, you know, that's just, you know, that's just something I kind of just popped into my head that I think 
yeah, is interesting. But um, but yeah, the next verse actually he didn't quote it. It says, "And by the power of the Holy Ghost, you will know the truth of all things." And I think you know I believe that that is accurate. And um, in the Bible, it actually talks about the Holy Spirit being a spirit of truth. So um, let's let's go here. Um, let's see. Can we see this? Yes, we can see this. Okay. So this is in John 15. Um, it says, But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. Okay. So the Spirit of truth. So this the spirit of truth, that is a, a name for the Holy Ghost. And he shall testify of me. Um, so we're going to see later on in the video, he's going to talk about um, not knowing or not being able to trust the spirit. We'll, we'll get to that when we can. Okay, let's, let's go to another one. Um, okay, so here on this, uh, we are in John 16, just the next chapter over, verse 13. How be it? When he, the spirit of truth, again, there's, you know, talking about the, the Holy Spirit, it's also known as the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. Okay, so that sounds exactly like the Book of Mormon verse, by the power of the Holy Ghost, um, you may know the truth of all things. It sounds like exactly the same. He will guide you into all truth. So he's not going to guide you astray. For he shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will shew you things to come. Okay, so that was just to finish the verse. But yeah, so we have the spirit of truth that will guide you into all things. Um, so there's, you know, that's important to know. And we, we're going to go back and we're going to listen to what he has to say more. Um, one second, I just exit out of that. So let me pull that back up. Um, but I believe that, you know, by the power of the Holy Ghost, you may know the truth of all things. The Bible says it's the truth, um, the spirit of truth. Okay. So let us, um, let me share this again and we are going to, um, continue. You pray to know if the Book of Mormon is true. The end of the Book of Mormon says this, And when ye shall receive these things, I would exhort you that ye would ask God, the Eternal Father, in the name of Christ, if these things are not true. And if ye shall ask with a sincere heart, with real intent, having faith in Christ, he will manifest the truth of it unto you by the power of the Holy Ghost. And by the power of the Holy Ghost, you may know the truth of all things. So that's the next verse. Uh, let's continue. Missionaries often compel people to pray with real intent to know whether or not the Book of Mormon is true. But is this something a Christian should do? We don't think so. And here's why. Okay, so we don't think that, a, this is what he's saying, we don't think Christians should pray about whether the Book of Mormon is true. Um, let's, uh, so let me just share this with you. Um, this is a verse out of the Book of Mormon. Um, I'm going to share a couple just from this chapter. This is 2 Nephi chapter 32, and we're going to read right here verse 8. Um, uh, it says, And now, uh, my beloved brethren, I perceive that ye ponder in still in your hearts, and it grieveth me that I must speak concerning this thing. For if ye would hearken unto the Spirit which teacheth a man to pray, ye would know that ye must pray. For the evil spirit teacheth not a man to pray, but teacheth him that he must not pray. Okay. So, we... <laughs> Us Latter-day Saints, us Mormons, when we hear people saying, oh, don't pray, right? There's there's a, a famous photo that someone took. Um, yeah, it was some uh, non-denominational, some Baptist church, some, I, I don't know what denomination, but some, uh, it's not Catholic, but so I'd say Protestant church, 
and, uh, they have their their signs where they put uh, funny comments sometimes. Well, this one said, don't pray about the Book of Mormon. That's how they get you. So when we hear people say, don't pray about the Book of Mormon, for, at least for me, this verse pops into my head. And it's like, oh, okay. Well, there's a spirit that's going to teach you that you should pray and that you must pray. And then there's another spirit that's going to teach you not to pray and that you must not pray. And so, you know, he's going to end up talking about, you know, how do you know what spirits what? Well, for me, this this makes sense. If God's given us prayer, the ability to communicate and connect with him, you know, why would we ever be ashamed or why would we ever shy away of using that power to ask him things and actually let's let's go to the let's go to the the bible right because that's in the book of mormon and, and you know what do you know a lot of christians don't take anything out of there you know so let's go to matthew chapter 7 and uh, we're going to read verse 7 and 8 and right here okay it says Ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Okay? For everyone that asketh, receiveth. And he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Okay? So this right here is telling us to ask, to seek, to knock. And it promises us, right? That if we ask, we're going to receive. If we seek, we're going to find. If we knock, it's going to be opened. Okay? So, that, that sounds like an open invitation, right? And you might read on in this chapter and say, well, but look, it's talking about physical things, right? It's talking about maybe physical or temporal blessings. Okay, well, what if we hop over to James 1.5? Maybe probably the most quoted scripture. Um, uh, from LDS missionaries that you're going to hear all the time, right? From the Bible. It says, If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. Okay. So this one clearly says, and it, you can see the, the, the comparison between the last two uh, verses I read in Matthew 7 and this one, right? It's talking about asking God. So this one says, if if you lack wisdom, well, wisdom isn't a physical thing. It's not like a gift, right? It's not talking about if your son asks you to give you, you know, bread and you give him a snake. You know, it's not talking about asking, you know, physical blessings or things from God. This right here is talking about wisdom. If you lack wisdom, okay, wisdom, knowledge, you know, I would put those in basically the same category. So if you don't know something, let him ask of God. Okay? So if you don't know something, you can ask God. Okay, now in this video, I know I'm taking a while to get to it, but I kind of want to set this up. That way when he says these things, it's it's not just like, oh yeah, you know, let's just go what he, what he says. Because this is what the Bible says. If you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Okay, but what what's going to happen when we ask about? Well, it says, God that giveth to all men liberally. Okay? So he's going to He's just going to, you know, I, what do I take that to mean? Well, he's going to answer you, right? He's, he's just going to he's gonna answer you. He's going to answer everybody. He's willing to do that. Okay, but listen to the next part. And upbraideth not. Okay. In Spanish, it says sin reproche. Okay, what does it mean? He's not going to rebuke you, right? He's not going to, to get upset with you. He's not going to, he's not going to, you know, punish you or be angry at you for asking a question, for not knowing the knowledge and trying to seek it, right? So in this video, it's going to be like, oh, well, you know, God doesn't want us to ask these questions because it's, you know, not what a Christian should do. And here's why. Well, right here it says, ask of God if you have a question, if you lack wisdom, because if we have a question, that means we don't know the answer. So we're lacking wisdom or knowledge in the thing. And God's going to give it to you and he's not going to get upset with you or punish you or be angry with you because you've asked. Okay. So with that, with knowing that, um, let's continue. Here are three reasons we don't think 
Christians should pray to know if the Book of Mormon is true. Reason number one, the Bible never tells us to use prayer as the primary means of discerning truth. Okay. Um, so, I mean, that's fine. Sure, let's, let's, let's concede the point, right? I don't know if it, this is exactly true. Um, I, I haven't gone through all the, the whole Bible looking just for this, but let's concede the point. Let's say the Bible never tells anyone to use prayer as the primary means of discerning truth, okay? But that doesn't mean that you can't. It doesn't mean that you can't, okay? So absence of evidence doesn't make evidence, um, you know, of uh, absence, right? So saying, well, it doesn't say this in the Bible doesn't mean that Therefore, the Bible doesn't support, or the Bible doesn't, well, obviously the Bible doesn't teach it, but the Bible doesn't support and that the Bible, sh you know, uh, says something is wrong or that we shouldn't do it. Okay. So, but here's the thing. We have the spirit and the spirit is a spirit of truth. It testifies of Christ. It testifies of truth and it leads us into all truth. So the question is, well, what does that mean? Okay. Well, from the LES standpoint, it would be, well, we need to communicate with God, ask him, pray, and that through reading the scriptures and through, you know, getting closer to God and to Christ, the spirit will communicate with us. We believe in personal revelation. Okay. So that's, that's pretty important. And so we have the spirit how can we communicate and let our desires be known to God through prayer? He's going to answer us through the Spirit. That's what that's what we believe. Okay, let's continue. See what he says. The Bible tells us of false spirits that are in this world to deceive people. It also tells us that Satan goes around looking like an angel of light. It tells us that false prophets will appear to be the genuine thing to many people. And it tells us that we cannot trust our own feelings or experiences. Because of these things, relying on our feelings as the certain and infallible response to our prayer could leave us susceptible to false spirits. How can we know, for example, if our feeling is a strong delusion sent by God, as Second Thessalonians 2 speaks of? How can we be objectively confident that a spirit that responds to our prayers is a true spirit or a false spirit? That's a significant matter to leave up to fickle and corrupted human minds. Okay, so let's, uh, let's talk about this point, okay? So I've, I've heard this a lot, okay? I've, I've, uh, I have someone who uh, is a non-denominational, I think he's a youth pastor, and I've uh, I'm done a couple video calls with him. He's a great guy. And um, he's brought this up. He's like, oh, well, you know, the heart of man cannot be trusted. Um, how do you know what you're receiving is from God? And that kind of goes back to what I said at the beginning of the video, right? The beginning of the stream. Well, if I can literally just say a prayer to, to some of these uh, denominations and to some of these beliefs, if I can just say, I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior, I'm saved. Why is it that if I say a prayer and I ask God a question, that He's going to, uh, you know, let uh, another, you know, a demonic spirit, which is what they're saying. They're basically saying that the spirit that's telling us that the Book of Mormon is true is it comes from the devil and is a servant of the devil. Why will all of a sudden He just? will God just allow me to be led away by a spirit? You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't see the consistency in that. And then I don't see the consistency in this teaching, uh, this understanding of you can't trust your heart and what it says in the Bible, right? So let's read this real quick, okay? This is in Romans 8. And so I, I looked in the Bible and when I when I read it and I try to find what it talks about the spirit. And this is what it says, right? For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Okay, verse 16. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are children of God. 
Okay. Oh, well, I guess you couldn't really see that, but I just read them. Okay. Um, here you go. That way you can see it more while I'm talking about it. Okay. So, again, for as many as are led by the, by the Spirit, of God, uh, Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Okay. And then says, the Spirit beareth witness with my spirit, or with our spirit, that we are the children of God. Okay. So, the, the question is, if you can't trust the heart of man, if you can't trust it, right? If it's something that just uh, can easily be be swayed one way or the other by a passing demonic spirit, and we think it's the spirit of God, then how do we ever know that we are sons of God, right? And I know that we LDS we 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 take sons of God and we have we have two meanings for it, right? Um, but this right here, this is talking about how most uh, other Christian denominations talk about the sons of God, right? And right here it says, those who are led by the Spirit of God, if are they who become the sons of God or are the sons of God? Then the question is, how do you ever know that you are a son of God? If you can't trust your heart, can you ever really believe that you've been led by the Spirit? You know what I mean? Like that that's the whole thing. It it it's just not consistent. Oh, you can't trust your heart. Well, here it says that the spirit's gonna bear witness to my spirit. So I should be able to 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 feel something, right? So I, I just don't I just don't see that being consistent. Okay, let's go back and uh let's see what else he has to say. Fortunately, God has made it very clear how we can know if a spirit is true or not. Number two, scripture commands us to test prophecy by comparing it to the teaching of the New Testament. The epistle of 1 John commands Christians, beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. So we know. Okay, so, you know, we, we talk about testing the spirits in our church, right? We talk about that. We, we know that there are false prophets prophets in the world we know that um people are i guess um touched by uh false spirits or evil spirits and that lead them away and stuff like that yeah we understand that um so he's about to use this passage to try to explain how we should see um and understand things but here's the thing he's saying all prophecy needs to go through the new testament okay well when this epistle was written the new testament wasn't wasn't complete wasn't wasn't a book right there were writings of the apostles but it wasn't a book so that's one thing and the second thing is where are the apostles mentioned in the old testament where does it say the messiah will come and he will call 12 apostles and then where does it say and after the the messiah is ascended back into heaven you know i He's gonna he's gonna come back down and appear to an evil man and turn his heart good, whose name is Paul, or was Saul and now Paul, right? So the these things didn't happen and weren't, I guess, testified of in the Old Testament, right? So using this all new prophecy, everything has to be in the Bible. It, it's it's not consistent because where are the where are the apostles, where's Paul in the Old Testament? It's not. But yet the the Jews of the time who were willing and had open minds and open hearts and could feel the spirit of God wrought within them, right? Or or they could at least feel that when they, uh, as Christ says, you'll know if the word is from God or if he just is speaking of himself, when they did what Christ told them to, they they knew it was from God, right? Not because they looked back in the Torah and they said, oh, okay, well, this says that this guy is going to be born in Bethlehem, and then he's going to call 12 apostles, and he's done that, so he's the guy. No, that's, that's, not, that's not why. Um, but let's continue. We know that there are false prophets, and we know that there are false spirits. So how do we discern if a prophet or a spirit is true or false? Well, this text in 1 John 4 gives us two ways. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God, and every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. So this first reason... 
Okay, so the first reason, we we believe that. Right? Literally, in the same chapter he quoted, uh, Moroni chapter 10. Um, I can pull it up, but I'll just, you know, give my best uh, quote from best from memory that I that I can. Um, it says, uh, whatsoever thing uh, teacheth of Christ or whatsoever thing leads you or teaches, sorry, teaches there is a Christ and that Christ is God, is sent from God. And whatsoever thing teacheth um, that there is no Christ, is it, right? So that's it's basically a judgment. and. Let me tell you, most people who probably read, I mean, watch these videos, right? And they're meant for Mormons, so it, I feel like a lot of evangelicals watch them in order to proselyte and uh, evangelize to members of our church. The Book of Mormon is very adamant that Jesus is God incarnate. Very adamant. So this, you know, th this test... Uh, doesn't go against the Book of Mormon. Reason combats a specific error that was present in John's day. This error said that Jesus merely had the appearance of a human, but did not truly come in the flesh. John makes it really clear. Any spirit that teaches this is not from God. But then he provides an even broader test to apply. In verse five through six, he says, these evil spirits are from the world. Therefore, they speak from the world and the world listens to them. We are from God. Whoever knows God listens to us. Whoever is not from God does not listen to us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. John here speaks of the spirits that are in the world and then contrasts that with we in reference to the apostles who are from God. He then okay, so uh, there it says spirit of truth again, talking about the Holy Ghost. Um, so basically he's saying okay, so we have the apostles and we have this apostle saying, whatever we say, you know, is right, which I would 100% agree with. And so whoever goes against it is wrong, which is true, right? If, if you go against the teachings of the apostles, and we believe in modern day apostles, you're, you're doing something wrong, right? So if you go against the teachings of the ancient day apostles and you go against the teachings of modern day apostles, uh, you're doing something wrong. We believe that. The Book of Mormon doesn't doesn't go against the New Testament. If you read the New Testament and you read the Book of Mormon, they they teach the same thing, right? It's it's all these theologies that you're reading into the Bible and the New Testament that make you believe that they teach something different. Honestly, if if you read the Book of Mormon and you read it with an open mind and you read it um, seeing seeking something out of it, like, what could I get out of this? You, you, your understanding of Jesus Christ is going to ex expand. It's going to deepen your testimony of Jesus Christ and his role and what he did. Because that's literally what it's here for. It's here for the convincing of the Jews and the Gentiles that Jesus Christ is the eternal God. It's literally what was translated as the title page of the Book of Mormon. So um, I don't hold to this consensus. He's going to say, well, the Book of Mormon goes against what the apostles say. I, you know, I, I, don't, I don't agree. So, yeah, I, I mean, you can try to point stuff out, but then... Um, we can talk about those things. I can say, well, what about this part of the Bible that supports what this says in the Book of Mormon? And then it would go, well, you know, let's explain this part of the Bible away with other verses. That way we don't have to believe this thing that we don't believe and which is also found in the Book of Mormon. That's, that's how it happens. So let's, let's go on. Then gives this method of testing various teachings. Whoever knows God listens to us. Whoever is not from God does not listen to us. And by this, we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. We can know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error by looking at who listens to what the apostles taught. Notice 1 John never tells us to pray to know whether or not these spirits are true. Instead, we're commanded to compare the teachings of the spirits and the prophets against the teachings of the apostles. So again, um... It doesn't say that you should pray 
I guess I'll concede it. Um, again, I, I haven't gone back through it to make sure that's true, but let's just concede the fact and say he's right. It doesn't say you can't pray to know the truth. Okay. Again, if we can't trust the spirit to talk to us and us to understand what it's saying, how can we know that the spirit has borne witness to our spirit that we are children of God? Right. And that's me saying that, but I guess Protestants wouldn't think that I'm a child of God because I, I'm not a, a Protestant. But Protestants, how can you know, how can you trust that the Spirit has borne witness with your spirit that you're a child of God? I think that's a very important question to answer. And then they might say, well, because I do what it says in the Bible, and the Bible it says if I do this, then I will be a child of God. But it also says the Spirit will bear witness. And that's how you're going to know. It says if you're led by the Spirit, that's, you know, you're a son of God. So, I mean, you, you have to have a part where you say, okay, well, the Spirit's touched me or I know I'm being led by the Spirit. So let's continue. Reason number three, when we neglect the clear command of God in order to indulge a revelation received through prayer, we dishonor God. Proverbs 28 9 says, If one turns away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer is an abomination. Okay, so um I've watched the video. I, I forget where he's going with this, but I think I think he's he's gonna do right here. He's going to read this and then he's gonna say, Okay, you so in order to pray about the Book of Mormon, you have to turn away from the Bible. That I, I don't agree. I just don't agree. That's not true. Okay. Obviously, if you read this, and my thoughts are, if one turns away his ear from the uh, from hearing the law, okay? So if you turn away from listening to God's commandments, if you turn away from, you know, listening to the words of God, even his prayer is an abomination, okay? So if you're not doing what God wants you to do, you think you're better, or you're just abandoning God. When you pray, it's an abomination. It's like it, you're spitting in the face of God saying, okay, well, I'm not going to listen to you, but hey, can you help me out with something? You know what I mean? Th that's what this is saying, but let's see let's see how he takes this. I believe he's going to say something that isn't really, it, it's not what this verse means, so let's see. Now, the law here refers to God's instruction generally. Latter-day Saints have often told me to just for a moment not consider the Bible, put it aside, and just pray with a sincere heart to know if the Book of Mormon is true or not. Okay, so we see what he did. So he says, somebody's told me to not think of the Bible, to put it aside, and to pray about the Book of Mormon. Okay, I don't think I've ever told anyone that. But obviously what these people are saying is, don't throw, they're not saying throw the Bible in the trash can and then pray about the Book of Mormon and see if it's true and forget about the Bible. They're saying, okay, you're, you have the Bible, that's great. Now take the Book of Mormon and ask God if it's true. That, that's what they're saying. They're saying you have the Bible, you know it's true, perfect. We believe it's true too. Now take the Book of Mormon and see if it's true. Read it, pray, and ask. That's not, I don't, when I read the Book of Mormon, I'm not spitting on the Bible and saying that it's not worthy of my attention at the moment because I'm reading the Book of Mormon. No, I read the Bible, and when I read the Bible, I'm not saying the Book of Mormon is not worthy of my attention. They're both word, they're both the words of God, right? And they both teach of Christ and help us know who he is. So I, again, I feel like this is a little bit of, deceiving like oh well it says if you turn away your your ear from hearing the law that doesn't mean i take the time to read another book and ask god if it's true because i lack the wisdom and if i ask god he's gonna give me you know liberally and he's not going to be upset with me he's not going to punish me for asking so i i don't think this is a a valid argument However, according to this verse, if I were to do that, my prayer would be an abomination. Again, not true. It's saying if you basically just spit in the face of God 
and don't do what he says and you don't, you know, follow what his teachings are. And then you pray and you're asking him from something. I don't even know the context of the verse, right? He didn't give the context. He just gave the verse and he's going from it. But I, 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 I'm pretty sure that what I'm saying is, is accurate. You don't follow the teachings of God and then you end up praying to him anyway for something or for help or something or because someone told you to. You're, you're, you're basically spitting in his face. You're like, I'm not going to listen to you, but here's a prayer anyway. It It's an abomination. It makes sense, but it doesn't make sense what he's trying to make it mean. God instructed us to test prophecy against the Old and New Testaments. And the truth is, the Book of Mormon contradicts those writings. If while knowing this, a follower of Christ... Okay, so boom right there he he put it in text in the on on the screen the book of mormon contradicts the the bible that's what he said no no real evidence he probably will say well i have other videos that that explain that again it they don't i've i've read the bible i've read the book of mormon i don't find any contradictions there's contradictions when you read your philosophy which to be honest comes from an apostasy right, a falling away, when you read the philosophy that was generated in apostasy into the text and then say, well, the Book of Mormon doesn't match this. Well, the Book of Mormon is from a restoration of the gospel, right? It was written with God's foreknowledge of knowing, okay, well, there we're, we need to explain these things better in order to correct the where people have gone wrong. So, um, and he kind of dug himself in a hole. It said, you need to take prophecy and compare it against the Old and New Testament. So again, where where does it say the Messiah will have 12 apostles? And where does it say that there will be someone named Paul who's going to do so much great work in God's church in the Old Testament? Because if it's not in the Old Testament, apparently it being in the New means it's not true. I mean, that that's the logical conclusion of, well... The Book of Mormon might, you know, in my opinion, says stuff against the Bible, and it's not in the Bible, so it can't be true. I, I just don't, I, I don't concede the point. I, I, uh, I don't agree. Christ prays about the Book of Mormon's truthfulness. He has turned his ear away from God's law, blatantly ignoring the tests that God gave us. It dishonors God to pray about. Let's go back and hear that. Okay, because that was important. Let's see what he says. He's kind of putting it all together. One turns away his ear from hearing the law. Even his prayer is an abomination. Now, the law here refers to God's instruction generally. Latter-day Saints have often told me to just for a moment not consider the Bible, put it aside, and just pray with a sincere heart to know if the Book of Mormon is true or not. However, according to this verse, if I were to do that, my prayer would be an abomination. God instructed us to test prophecy against the Old and New Testaments. And the truth is, the Book of Mormon contradicts those writings. If, while knowing this, a follower of Christ prays about the Book of Mormon's truthfulness, he has turned his ear away from God's law, blatantly ignoring the tests that God gave us. It so, stating the Book of Mormon contradicts the Bible, and then stating, so if a Christian... With, with with no further evidence here, but like it's fact, and then stating if a Christian reads it, then they're reading something that contradicts the Bible, and then they're doing something wrong. But uh, the Bible says, if you lack wisdom, let you know, let him ask of God, who's gonna give liberally, and he's not gonna he uh, he's gonna upbraid it not, and it will be given unto him. So why is it wrong to ask a question about something? Like if I read a book and I ask God, is this a good book to read? And does it have accurate information in it? Why can God, you know, and maybe it's, maybe it does. Maybe there's something in that contradicts the Bible. And I didn't know that because I haven't read the exactly whole thing. So why why would god not just say it's not a good book 
don't 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 accept it as true why am i now doing something wrong and why am i now if god if i believe god tells me i am it's true i'm now going to be it's going to be claimed that i have listened to a demon spirit you know what i mean like or an evil spirit so it, this this whole argument just doesn't make sense and we've been going for about 40 minutes it's a five minute video but i just wanted to you know share verses and i wanted to talk about it because you know this is something i hear all the time and i'm like it, it just doesn't make any sense but let's continue let's dishonors god to pray about the truthfulness of the book of mormon while knowing it contradicts the old and new testaments our first order of business should be to use the tests god gave us I do want to note that God answers his people's prayers and that we are commanded to pray for wisdom. But a prayer for wisdom and discernment is a long way off from praying to know whether or not the Book of Mormon is true, especially given the biblical commands that tell us how to test spirits and prophets. So Christians should not pray to know if the Book of Mormon is true. Rather, we should compare the teachings of the Book of Mormon against the teachings of the Bible. So there you go. He 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 tries to pull in James one five at the last second, and he says, um, "So yeah, then uh, basically we're told to pray for wisdom, but you pray about the Book of Mormon. It's it's just not wisdom because it contradicts the Bible, not giving any evidence in you know that it does. And again, I'm telling you, it doesn't. Um, you can say it does, and we can take that." part by part but i've read both they both testify of christ the same christ and any christian who takes the book of mormon and reads it you don't even have to believe it's true if you can take narnia and you can read it and you, it can help you you know see oh wow this you know aslan it's it's christ and that helps you any christian can take the book of mormon not having to believe it's true and what it talks about christ will help you deepen your connection with him now i'm telling you the book of mormon is another testament of jesus christ it's it's a true testament of christ and it's the word of god and i know that from studying it i know that from uh looking into how it came about um I've had the Spirit testify it to me, so um, I think just stating it's con you know it contradicts the Bible, and that telling Christians if you pray about it, then um, you're doing something wrong. I think that's kind of like a fear tactic, and I feel like that you know I I just feel like it's disingenuous. You can ask for wisdom, but you can't ask for some wisdom because it's wrong even though god says i'm not going to get upset with you if you ask me for wisdom and for knowledge but he will if you ask for some i don't think these tests are going to um that he said outweigh what it says there right you can ask for god you can ask god for guidance but if you ask him for something um that that contradicts what he says then you're it's an abomination I, I don't, you know, I, I don't see that being accurate. I don't see that being true. So we went through the video. Um, I had fun doing it. I, uh, I feel like this guy is doing this out of, out of love, but I, I don't, I don't see what he said as being true. I don't agree with certain stances and certain, um, statements he's made and the Bible says there's a spirit, and we can know through the spirit certain things. It testifies of Christ. It will lead us to all truth, and by it we will know if we're sons or uh, if we're sons of God, right? And if we can't trust our hearts to understand these things, how can we know we're being guided? How can we know? How can we feel it testify to us of Christ? And how can you know? It it just doesn't make sense to say you can't trust your heart, and then so you can't trust your heart. So you have to use the Bible. Okay, well, what about certain things in the New Testament that aren't found in the Old Testament? Does that not kind of prove that point that it's mute? Like, you can't just say, oh, okay, well, everything after the New Testament, 
now has to be shown by the New Testament, but not everything in the New Testament has to be shown by the Old Testament. Seems like kind of like a, a double standard. So I don't concede that point either. I think it's very important that if something blatantly contradicts, like it says in that scripture, right? If something says that, and I think it's the same thing written twice. Okay, it's written twice. If something says that Christ isn't uh, God in the flesh, or he's he didn't come in the flesh, then they're they're wrong, right? It's not good. And then and then it talks about the apostles. We have the truth. We speak the truth. Well, what do they speak? They say that Christ came and that he was real and that he, you know, died for us and that he resurrected and he ascended into heaven. So I think it's the same thing written twice. If you deny that fact, then obviously you're not speaking the truth. The Book of Mormon adamantly testifies that Christ is God who came down to save his, you know, his people. He came down to save the whole earth and all can come unto him. And if we do that, we will be saved. Like that's what the Book of Mormon says. So um, if you believe that contradicts the Bible, then I don't know what to say. And the last thing I want to end with, because this has been a long video. Um, how do you know the Bible's true? That's that's a, that's a very important question. And I've asked certain Christians this, and it always it, they always end up saying something that sounds like what us Mormons say, right? We say by the power of the Holy Ghost. You may know the truth of all things. Well, so how do you know the book? Of, how do you know the Bible is true? Is it because your parents told you? Is it because um, it's it has a lot of history and it's old and it's about you know fifteen hundred years old, you know two thousand years old, whatever it is? Um, is it because all these people, like a billion people, say, "Oh, I know it's true"? And when I'm asked, you know, a number of Christians, this they say, "No, not for those reasons." Not because someone told me, not because a lot of people say it is, not because it's old. And I'm like, okay, well, how do you know? And it comes down to they've had a personal spiritual experience with what the Bible has told them to do um, and them doing that. And they felt the spirit from that. They felt the spirit testify and they felt the truthfulness of how by living its teachings, they've been changed. Okay, that's what we that's what we do with the Book of Mormon, Right. I, I can read the Book of Mormon, and I can feel the Spirit, and I can feel how, oh, if I do, and I, I've done things, right? I I read the Book of Mormon, it's like, okay, well, this is what you need to do, and I do it, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I, I see how this is true, just how these Christians did with the Bible. So prayer and asking is just one way to facilitate getting uh, a pure testimony that it is true. It's not the only one. We don't, we don't hold to that. We don't believe that. We don't think you can only understand the Book of Mormon's truth through prayer. Otherwise, you don't know. No. But the question is, how do you know the Bible's true? And if you answer anything other than because I've had a spiritual experience with it, then I think that maybe you need to uh, gain a spiritual testimony of the truthfulness of the Bible. Because if not, then something might come along and it can rock your foundation of if the Bible's true or not, right? If you believe the Book of Mormon is true, but you haven't had a spiritual manifestation or you haven't uh, had God tell you that in some way, but either by reading it or asking him or something, if a video like this comes along and says, oh, well, Christians don't, don't, don't pray about the Book of Mormon, it contradicts. And they don't, they don't even give any evidence. Just something like this, it can shake your foundation of your testimony in the Book of Mormon. Same thing with the Bible, right? Some atheist comes along and says, well, you know, these stories, these, you know, what it talks about Jesus in the Bible, the same thing about pagan beliefs, and they give you something, some quote or whatever, and you, oh, well, okay, then the Bible might not be true. might not be true. You see, you have to have a spiritual experience for it to mean something to you. So that's what I wanted to end with. Um, we went about uh, 10 times as long as his video went, but um, that's fine. I, I enjoy uh, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed talking. Hopefully it was a good live stream. Um, hopefully people uh, see this and enjoy it. Um, and yes, this is it. Thank you so much. 
Um, please like, comment, subscribe to uh, the channel. Read it, Bob.